Welcome to the first episode of the seventh season of the Ubuntu podcast. It's Wednesday the 2nd of April and we're going to discuss what's been happening in the news and in the Ubuntu community. If you're listening live you can send us messages using the chat facility on that there website that we have and also in the IRC channel. I'm Tony and joining me this week are the regular team, Yay. the fab foursome Yay. in no particular order. It's Mark. I think that is a particular order. It's it's reverse <laughs> order. It's Mark. <laughs> oh, not the order I was hoping for. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mark. Suddenly much louder than you were earlier. Oh, and, I'm sorry. And Laura's here. Hiya. And Alan's here. Hello. Alan's here. Alan. <laughs> yeah. Well, we hope you've missed us. Um, it's been a long winter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if they have or haven't. They're getting more of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this ball is rolling. It can't be stopped now. Um, yeah, a long old winter. We'll, we'll catch up a bit next in the next episode and find out what we've been up to. <laughs> all but, right, um, then. Wait till next week, then. Everybody's here. We're all, we're all awake. We all had yep. quite a bit of cake and yes, quite a bit of tea. And, tea, yes. Ooh, yes. and uh, we're going to get on with it, shall we? Yes. Yep. Why okay. not? Let's listen to some news. I think we should talk about some news. Well, Firstly, uh, DRM Free Gaming Outfit GOG.com are bringing at least 100 games to Linux this year. They haven't released anything yet, but will support Mint and, of course, Ubuntu, saying these two distros will get the full GOG.com treatment. What does that Ooh. mean? Um, well, they I, I assume it means that they will be fully supported on those platforms, uh, available to download DRM free from the website. And um, there's some other stuff they have, like a, um, an... Uh, download manager because some of the games are quite big so I think it lets you download uh, manage which ones are downloading and so for those who don't know this is like Steam kind of thing not no well it's it's, GRG stand for well it originally stood for good old games because it was focused on taking classic games from like DOS and early Windows and getting them to run on modern systems but now they do that and they also do um, indie games so the, Mm -hmm. the kind of stuff you see in the humble indie bundle so, and it's all DRM free, whereas on Steam it's all wrapped um, up. In... It's all wrapped up in Steam, um, so hmm. you, you can actually get a lot of the a lot of the indie games which are on Steam. You can get DRM free um, through GOG.com. So you just go to get GOG, you sign in, and you it's got like a storefront, yep. and you buy games, yep. and then you press a button and download a thing, and you install it, and then you don't have to have a wrapper or a, a store app like iTunes or Steam on your machine. Exactly. You can just go to the website download it and install it as many times on as many machines as you like yes and you can like you the um you log into your account and your library of games stays there for you to download so for example i bought fallout on there a while ago which runs under wine um they don't sell fallout anymore but i can still go and buy i can still go and download a drm free installer of fallout and it, and do they ship it with wine or do you, do you just happen to know i just that happen it to know them? that it works um play on linux is a um like a an easy instally software on wine utility is that what and they call it i can't it's I, instally well it's, it's like a load of scripts for installing stuff through that wine. sounds more like it um and they <laughs> they have on their list a load of the games that they support are based on the gog.com installers uh, and they've right. also got a load like the dos games a lot of them use dos box so you can download the their version install it and then put in the Linux version of DOSBox instead of the Windows version of DOSBox. So this is essentially like going to the Pirate Bay and downloading abandonware, <laughs> basically running it in one, but, but paying and legally and making sure the people who wrote it get the money. Yeah. Can I just nice. add, I was going to say all that, but Mark beat me well, to Well, of course. It. We were going to have you, but you were busy with twiddling buttons and things. Oh, uh, yeah. I did. Yeah. Sorry, more, more um, from Tony's gaming news segment, <laughs> um, which I know you've all been missing, the, the insights um, yes. from the... the well, that's, that's the game's what, master. One of the reasons why we've been off air for so long <laughs> is because Tony's been sat there gaming all the time. And you know, yeah, really... how are you doing with uh, Defense of the Ancients too? Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's going very well. I've defended several ancients. Oh, that's good. And they're both very grateful. <laughs> Super. <laughs> Moving on. After checking carefully that this wasn't an ap- April Fool's, uh, it seems Microsoft are going to release the source code from MS-DOS and Microsoft Word. But before you get too excited, the source code dates from the early 1980s and is not being released <laughs> under... Or 1908s, a... as it says in there. Does it? Oh, I can't see because the date is so small. I figured it was 80s. Uh, and not being released under a Floss license. What is the point of that? It's for archival and research purposes or something for so, people who want to research how ms dos works so yeah does microsoft word now have a completely different code base from i what imagine it had? so yeah. yes 
I'd okay. imagine there's very little similarity between mm. you know, I, now I, and it's that I hope long ago. There's very little similarity. That, that, that bit where you press A on your keyboard and A appears on the screen, <laughs> that might still be the same. Well, code. I doubt it because originally it was for like DOS and now it's for Windows. Oh, is this the DOS this version? This is the DOS version. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Word 1.0.1 1. Yeah. 0. 0. or something. Right. Okay. Mm. So, but people but, getting nostalgic about that. Well, yeah, I mean, I can, I can see some value in, you know, in, in some interest in seeing how they how they uh, coded this in the same way that I'm personally interested in how Ant Attack was written. You know, it's not going to give me any benefit. I'm not going to be able to write better software knowing how Ant Attack <laughs> on the Z80 CPU on the Spectrum was written like 30 <laughs> years ago. And I, I don't think I'm going to get much value. I mean, it's interest more than anything. Mm. But yeah. even then, there's been some people saying you shouldn't look at it. Because it it will it taint you. It, it will taint you. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, in the same way that these leaked copies of Windows that came out on you know Pirate Bay or whatever, um, people have said you shouldn't look at that because it's uh, encumbered by you know restrictive mm-hmm. licenses and you may be looking at patent encumbered code and you shouldn't because it might taint any free software that you make. Wouldn't, wouldn't from that the patents have expired by now? Um, well, the, well, the copyright you copyright might see you might see the there. copyright code, and then yeah. you you might remember that when you write something else, and therefore yeah. consciously or subconsciously. Yes, uh, I mean, I I think the the thing here to focus on is that it's it's being donated to the National Museum of Computing, ah. I guess in America. Yes, um, uh, Alan and I have been there. In fact, ah. have we? Yes, yes. we oh, went. Oh, we did. Uh, didn't in, we? Uh, during UDS. UDS in Mountain View. Oh, that was Never awesome! That place, big Babbage engine, and lots of old IBM hard disks. So yeah, yes. it's not it's not being released as as you know, hello world. Here's some source code. It's being you know archived as a as a historical artifact, as much as anything else. Mm. Mm, excellent. Well, there we go. And uh, speaking of historical artifacts. Um, <laughs> You can create some using Blender 2.7, which is out now. Um, you can model a jug, an earthenware pot, or an old vase. Or an entire film, Tony. Yeah. An entire film. It has a video editor built in and yeah, yeah. 3D rendering capability. Blender is awesome. You yeah. could do a simulation of Pompeii or something if you want to be old about it. A whole film of historical artefacts. I mean, haven't they started and you can... a new film? Uh, yes, they have. Not just one studio, Blender Foundation. It's multiple studios around the oh, world. Really? Yeah, but they're doing it in a really cunning way. You know how you would expect. Well, hang on. How are they all different artists rendering? You know, different parts of the film, but the the different scenes are stylistically very different. You're following mm. different oh, characters right. and okay. uh, different parts of the film, and they're done by different studios working collaboratively uh, towards this this full feature film rather than the shorts that like Big Bug Bunny and yeah. uh, mm. Sintel and the others that they've done in the past they're using Blender to, oh, cool. to make these much this much bigger film do you know what the title is I can't remember off the top of my head but if I'm you go sure to you... blender.org it's like there's a big banner on the front page oh, okay. about yeah, it and there's a and, and then when when you look at the the trailer for it you can see how it's going to work with all the different studios it's, it looks very interesting do you think they could do a 3D rendering of the source code for Microsoft Word 1.0.1? Well, yes, but would anyone watch it? Uh, I would. So um, the new version supports uh, volume rendering of atmospheric effects, smoke and stuff, presumably, yeah. and clouds and mist and fog. Um, uh, enhancements to improve game development. So it's not just a video editor or yeah. a rendering, it's a it's game a, platform. It's a game platform as well. There's, there's a, a few um, tutorials I've seen. Um, there's a guy called Chris, I can't remember his last name, uh, spelled with a K, and he does Python tutorials and all kinds of other tutorials. And he started writing a game which I think was a kind of homage to um, Angry Birds, and it was called Peed Off Penguins or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, where, and he's done a whole tutorial in Blender cool. for how to create a game where you, you know, drag the penguins and they mm-hmm. fly and stuff. You yeah. can create, um, use it for creating objects for 3D printing as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. It's There's really nothing awesome, you can't do with it. No, there isn't. And a longer way to change to copyright law in the UK will finally allow owners of those thin plastic things called CDs to legally rip them to MP3, ARG, or whatever format you like. Uh, format shifting will also be permissible for ebook readers. However, you still can't distribute or share your ripped music, not even to people who are in your family in your own home. Who might be able to listen to the said music if you played it through me- a stereo ground. Get out of my room. You can't listen to this. Yeah. You're breaking so copyright with your form- ears. Format shifting for ebook readers. Is, does that mean that you're allowed to break the DRM? That was my question too. And is the answer no? 
Uh uh-uh. uh. I think the answer is probably no because that would be uh, bypassing reverse the encryption engineering. system. Reverse yeah. engineering, yeah. And you mustn't do that. Computer Even if you're doing it to do something which is now a protected right in law. Uh, yes, because Computer Great. Misuse Act still says you can't do things they don't want you to do. And can't you reverse engineer under the UK law, but it's just in the US you can't do that? Now you're getting beyond the limits of my knowledge. <laughs> Thin though they are. Um, but it's good news that you can now rip your DVD. You can not now that, do what you were doing anyway. Not that anyone was ever prosecuted for it in the same way that not that anyone will be prosecuted for ripping a CD and putting it on you know, their kid's MP3 player. Yeah, but I will walk slightly prouder in the street, Alan come June that I am right, not okay. a sinner <laughs> not a sinner in that way anymore okay my conscience will be a smidgen clean I'll, I'll tell you what I'll rip twice as many CD, CDs and give them to my children just to outweigh the pride <gasps> that you have you heard it here first yep. Mr Policeman come and get him before June <laughs> lock him up lock, lock, lock his kids up uh, Amazon has finally announced the Fire TV, their much anticipated rival to similar things from Apple and Google and Ubuntu. And, <laughs> I saw that coming. <laughs> the set top box is said to feature a quad core CPU and two gigabytes of RAM with a separate GPU capable of 1080p, notably not 4K because of all those 4K televisions that everybody has. Uh, it's also rumoured to feature gaming capabilities via a gamepad, which is perhaps similar to the Ouya if it's running Android. Uh, well, yeah, it seems to be. I mean, I've not seen what games are going to be available for it, um, but I would assume, given it's going to run some modified version of Android, then yeah, there will be Android-style games, and a lot of them are are starting to. Well, a lot of them support game pads, mm. and I suspect with the with this device, then the Amazon store will ship with you know games that default to supporting the. Um, the, the gamepad which is you know it's good having one box underneath your telly that uh that you know you can watch films listen to music mm. and uh and play games on that you know yeah people will have more arguments over <laughs> what you're going to do with it excellent um also while we've been off the air the uh, stream of revelations about uh, the nsa gchq and other intelligence agencies has carried on unabated. The latest stories accuse the government agencies of targeting webcam chats, German satellites, German presidents, hotmail accounts, angry birds, and probably everything else. Yeah, there's. I think it's safest to assume now that basically your system is compromised. They are watching what you're doing unless you read otherwise in the papers. Basically, <laughs> Unless there's an article that says Tony Whitwell was not monitored yeah. by the NSA. So um, we should assume you are being monitored. Indeed. Even indeed. when you walk down the street. You mean they pride. could be listening yeah. to our conversation right now? They could. There'd be people, people listening. <laughs> they could be listening to this if they go to podcast.ubuntuuk.org slash live. At 8.30 British summer time on yeah. every other Wednesday evening. <laughs> <laughs> They've got to be quite dedicated, haven't I they? Think, I, I, I think that's the end of the news. Yeah, th- there's no way that that could actually happen because that would evolve over time and the government departments don't do that. True. True. But yes, um, that's the end of the news. And those of you who hated the jingles last year that reminded you how to get in touch will be pleased to hear this. The Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that tickles, titillates or taunts you, tweet us at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. We really would like to hear from you. So go on, do your duty, keep calm and compose an email. Now for the section we laughably call community news, which is basically overspill from the news. <laughs> but Don't give all our secrets away. <laughs> oh, there, there's more, there's more that, stuff about I? Ubuntu here than there is in the news section. That's true. So we can't true. be accused of being biased in the news section. This we used true. to call it a bit about Ubuntu, but that was clearly, uh, uh, clearly an intuitive and helpful title. So we've canned, <laughs> we canned that two seasons. Because okay, community so news encompasses events as well. This is true. <laughs> of which there are none listed here. No. Anyway, let's start with the community news that Brendan Ike has been appointed CEO of Mozilla uh, and uh, controversy over his financial support for an anti-gay equality legislation in California. That's not equality for anti-gays. That's... that's <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. badly worded, isn't it? <laughs> so basically, some years ago, he gave financial aid to a bill called Proposition 8, which sought to outlaw uh, 
uh, equal opportunity uh, marriage for gay people in California. Yes. Yep. And uh, years have passed, and he's been CTO of Mozilla, and now he's CEO of Mozilla Corp, hmm. uh, not the foundation. And there's been a bit of a brouhaha from various points asking for his resignation, asking for him to make statements about the inclusiveness in Mozilla, which has mm. been done. Yes. Um, and it's kind of not died down. I think some people thought that would die down and it would all be done and dusted, but uh, it's kind of carried on for a few days now. Yeah, there have been uh, LGBT people who work within Mozilla who've said that they've never had a, uh, a negative experience directly from him. And, you know, it's been a boss within a workplace, you know. Um, who hasn't who hasn't done anything wrong in their experience? So it's an interesting position, isn't it? Because your political views, which, when he was CTO, weren't particularly surfaced and <laughs> trumpeted and talked about. But now right. he's CEO. Um, does that right. mean that Firefox and Mozilla and the other other products are going to radically become anti-gay <laughs> in some way? And he did pretty much invent JavaScript, and no one's. Re- I've really? not had anyone suggest that um, we boycott JavaScript. Mm. Well, it's uh, yeah, I have heard people <laughs> say that. <laughs> really? For, yeah, for different reasons. Different reasons. Well, no, I've heard, I've heard, yeah. Plenty of people have said boycott JavaScript. Come on, Mark. <laughs> but not on these grounds. Yeah. Mm. And it's, it's a tricky position, Yeah, given yes. none of us are LGBTQ or whatever the, yeah. uh, the various letters are. So we're not in that position or none of us live in California. So we're not <laughs> impacted by this legislation. So let's throw some peanuts in uh, from here. But, yes. Um, I, it's tricky because you know clearly the guy has beliefs that go against what some of the employees of the company he runs uh you know yeah have. and that's going to be difficult for those people who work for him for some of them i'm sure yeah um i'm not i i can see why people call for his reg- resignation because he is the leader of uh, the company i can see why they would call for his resignation i'm not in i, I don't think it's a good idea to boycott Mozilla project, projects or products. I think that's misguided. And OkCupid okay popping up a, a splash on their website which uh, suggested that Firefox users should try another browser, <sighs> including Internet Exploder, it offered, or Chrome, um, I think was possibly not the best idea but gave them loads of great publicity nonetheless. Mm. Yes, it's interesting that for the free software community and um, sort of the more liberal aspects of uh, of society, you know, people who kind of just believe, love whoever you want. Mm. Um, and as long as you're not hurting anybody, who cares? You know, um, that sort of liberal attitude and free software seem to go hand in hand quite often. Um, and it's a good, it's a, the meritocracy thing, I guess. Well, I think the problem is not that he, he believes something, but the fact that he put cold card cash yeah. down yeah. to oppose something. Yes. Yeah, and that, that's, that's, I'm, I'm there's a bit of a difference. I certainly don't agree with his opinions, but I can see that there might be circumstances in which political opinions of somebody outside the workplace, it, it's a difficult point when they cross into the workplace. Yeah, I guess but it, I don't know. I it would have been a clearer, a clearer thing if it had been a, putting money into a racial segregation thing. You could kind of, it wouldn't be any different in some ways, but people would feel that there was more of a right and wrong about it because it's more established. Yeah. Um, That's a really good point, actually, Laura. I hadn't thought of it in in that terms. Yeah, that would be an obviously (laughs) wrong thing to do, wouldn't it? But... Yeah, but that's Why already covered what? by legislation, really. Yeah. Whereas yeah. this, this, this was a point at which there was legislation being enacted or trying to be enacted. It was a debate. Yeah, it was or a debate about out. legislation. That was the point. Yeah. Um, so you know, if if there was somebody who was supporting racial segregation uh, legislation, you could call them in their judgment into question. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Very tricky. Well, hopefully things will be resolved one way or the other um, before too long. Um, yeah. So, uh, on a lighter note, fourteen oh four LTS is almost upon us. Yeah, uh, two weeks. When? What date is it? The Seven, Thursday, seventeenth of April. Cool. I'm looking forward to that because I'm still on twelve oh four. Yeah, so was I till recently. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, didn't say It's gonna. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, for instance, Steam is currently supported on twelve oh four. It's going to be interesting to see. Um, That's oh. fine on my fourteen oh four. Well, system. yeah, no, but I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how. Uh, whether whether support for things like that how quickly it um, moves on so yeah whether they say oh we're going to stay on 1204 until it, it end of life's and then see what happens or whether they say right we're going to move and say 1404 is what we recommend well yeah i well, i don't know i don't know what steam will explicitly do 
Um, I know there was a big push that they said, you know, we support Ubuntu and, you know, go for this version. Mm. I, 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 I'm not sure whether they will, you know, carry on with that after, after 1404 comes out or not. That's, that's an interesting point. But, you know, the software carries on working. Yeah. No, yeah How long is it supported for? Uh, five years. Okay. So, so there's been a lot of um, mire about uh, Mia and, uh, and Wayland <laughs> in, um, in the news over the last, like, year now. <laughs> uh, feels like longer. Still can't remember what they are. But the cool thing is 1404 will not ship with Mir or Wayland, but ships with X. Yeah. So for the next five years, you know, if you want to carry on running a desktop that is traditional X-based, then Ubuntu 1404 is there. And 1204 mm-hmm. is still going to be supported for three years more. Uh, yeah, the, my simple maths means yes, I yes. agree with you. Yes. Cool. So some cool things which are in um, 1404 on the desktop, because um, I've also installed it on my work laptop, um, a new lock screen, which looks like LightDM. Is it LightDM? Yes. Or is, yes, right. So it's it's exactly the same l- password entry box which you get when you log in. Yeah. It fades nicely in and out with the desktop. It's all very nice. Uh, yeah, that's quite cute. Um, in window menus. So you can oh, now... Oh, locally integrated menus. Not yes. universal yes. Mac style one. Both, it's both. So you can you can decide whether. So when it's when it's when the window's maximized, it'll always be at the top. When the window's not maximized, you can choose globally. You can't choose it each time whether whether they should be um, in the title bar of the window when you mouse over, or whether they should always be at the top. And it's by default, it's at the top, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Global menu by default, but you can have them inside the window if you want to. Yeah. I I have them inside the window, but I generally have everything maximized, so I yeah. <laughs> so I they end up being at the top of the screen yeah. anyway. But and I, but the the nice thing is having that um, unbreaks uh, sloppy focus. Uh, focus follows mouse. Yeah. <laughs> because ah, that broke. Yes. When you try to go and yeah, yes. with global oh, menu, yeah. having the menu up there, if you traverse across another yeah, window, yeah. the menu would change on the way <laughs> to the top of the screen. <laughs> and now, because the menu can be inside the window you're currently in, I've returned on um, sloppy focus using Unity Tweak Tool, I think, which is in the repository, which is brilliant. Um, and um, yeah, now I'm super happy and I'm way more productive than I have been for the last three years. <laughs> Folks, follow mouse is the way to go. Yes. So you're getting more web apps now. Oh, yeah. And there's also um, UI scaling options in the appearance settings as well, which lets you um, say how big, like, the launcher and the... Um, what's the name of the bar across the top, Alan? Uh, the menu bar. The menu bar should be. Yes. So, for instance, if you've got a, a high-resolution screen, you can now adjust it so that it takes up more pixels. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah that was a flaw. Because we, we never really caught up with... Um, with OS X on the high DPI screens, yeah. as soon as they came out, Unity looked kind of lost in a <laughs> tiny little slither down the side of the screen. So, yeah, that's that's landed a little while ago, and that's mm-hmm. much nicer. What, we've, it says no more keyboard options. Oh, What's yeah. That? Well, well, it used to be that you could go into your keyboard layout settings, and there were a load of options like enable control alt backspace to kill X, and you could map um, caps lock onto something else um, so that you didn't have caps lock, which I like not having. Have they gone? Yeah, they've gone. If you if you click on that now, it just takes you to um, some uh, other key, keyboard, keyboard settings. Yeah, keyboard yeah. shortcuts. What, yeah. Which well, is a shame. Disappeared in GNOME, or whether we we threw that out. What do you do with caps lock? Then? I usually map it to another super key so I can use it to open the dash, or I just disable it. I mean, I used to before I found that option. I used to just take it off my keyboard because I was fed up with pressing it by accident and having to turn it off. How do you shout on the internet? I hold shift. <laughs> Okay. He puts a big heavy weight on the shift key yes. and then or I don't. I, I don't allow myself to shout on the internet. It makes him think by twice. Not a caps lock. That, dear listener, that sounds like a challenge. Get Mark to shout on the internet. <laughs> uh, yeah. What's next, Mark? Um, the Amazon Search Scope and presumably similar scopes will uh, no longer be enabled by default on Unity Eight. Uh, yeah. That's uh, not the one you're talking about, is it? No, that's fine. no but I did the wrong one. No, that's, that's fine. fine. Uh, yeah, this is um, what Mark uh, uh, will talk about. <laughs> well done. <laughs> and no doubt in his interview next week. Yes, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's, let's make sure we ask him about that. Yeah, yeah, so we so Unity 8 is not going to be the one on the on the LTS release. Yeah, so this is not really anything to do with 1404. This is Unity 8, which is currently shipping on the phone phone. and tablet, um, but will land in the desktop at some point in the future. But it's changed the way in which um, results are presented when you search, which um, is is kind of resolving one of the long... part of the long-term problem that a lot of people have had with the whole uh, dash in the first place. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, yay. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, anything else uh, in the yeah. news? 
Canonical have announced that Ubuntu One will be closing down the file service Ubuntu One that people use to sync stuff between their computers. Do that they run Ubuntu and on Windows and on <laughs> Mac and that, on they? Android Obviously and not on enough iPhone? People. <laughs> um, as of today, it's no longer possible to purchase music from the Ubuntu One music store, thus rendering it rather silly. <laughs> <laughs> the file syncing service will be disabled on the 1st of June and all files deleted on the 31st of July. Canonical CEO Jane Silber explained that the decision was due to Ubuntu's focus being on a converged operating system rather than cloud services, services, services and services where they are already out-competed, if out-competed is in fact uh, an mm. acceptable word. I don't know, you said it. <laughs> I just say what's written down in front of so, me. I'll remember so basically that. the bits that are left that, that are still working is U1DB... The Ubuntu one uh, um, single, single sign-on sign on. and something else. And, um, uh, something to do with money. Oh, Ubuntu Pay. Ubuntu Pay. Right, so Not paying for products. Uh, yeah, funny case. that bit's staying up and running. Although um, <laughs> although you can't actually buy the products anymore from the music store to pay for them. Right. So I could just pay for things but I don't anything get. Anything you've bought from the music store was all non-DRM and yep. you could just download it anyway. Yes. So you could just go and download all the stuff that you bought from the music store. Yeah, sure. And keep a copy. Yeah. And everything that's in Ubuntu One File Sync, you need to get out of yes. Ubuntu One before 31st, 31st of, July. of July. Right. Mm. Yeah. And it'll stop, the syncing will stop working on the 1st of June, but you'll still be able to get hold of your stuff. So I think there's an opportunity for uh, our listeners to suggest alternatives to Ubuntu One. And Cloud. For um, our and other listeners. Sync. To, uh, to yeah. try. It's particularly useful for me because I actually use um, Ubuntu One for my business. So I have a synced folder on my computer that I process photographs on and they sync up to Ubuntu One and then I send my clients a link to the zip file using Ubuntu One. I'm pretty impressed we've got 25 minutes into the show before Tony mentions his wedding photography business. <laughs> uh, Tony Whitmore uh, Weddings.com. Well, uh, as you may know, Alan, it's not just weddings. It's all sorts of... Uh, <laughs> I photographed Doctor Who. Maybe we should Anyway's talk about that next needs. week. Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk about that later. But the point is, it's a real business application that I've yeah. been relying yeah. on this service for. And I say to my clients that the files will be available for so long after that I've sent them the link. And now right. I'm going to have to do a lot of work to get out of that. Right. Um, but, yeah, so I, I would love to hear suggestions that cover all of the use cases because it's not just the syncing files between places there's also that the the being able to share individual files or folders securely with a you know with another person mm. that kind of stuff but they are uh, open sourcing it aren't they yes they are open sourcing the server side the code needs a clean up and i think there's some work to do there but they're going to open source them. so if you'd like to uh to take on the mantle of running ubuntu one just for tony, tony. Under, yeah. for tony <laughs> under a pro- presumably under a different brand yeah you call it i folder <laughs> <laughs> i think that's all we have in the Community news. That's all for this episode, the first episode of the seventh season of the Ubuntu podcast. We will be back next week with an interview with one Mr... Uh, what's his name? I can't remember. Um, um, Mark... It? Mark, Mark, Mark yes. Johnson. Yeah, interview with me. No, All yeah. about how great I am. Mr. Shuttleworth himself. <laughs> ah, Mark Shuttleworth, the grand my high boss. vizier. Stop saying horrible <laughs> things about my boss. I thought I said anything horrible. I wonder if he'll say anything horrible it. about you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, could well yeah. do. Could well do. And we'll be back with all your feedback as well. So it's not just an interview with Mark Shuttleworth. We'll read out some random emails we received over the last three If months. you are listening live, stay tuned, and the next episode is coming up shortly. Don't give away the magic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.